community that is importance of cloud in iot as our speaker for this session is dr suraj sharma welcome you sir <clears throat> Dr. Suraj Sharma has done M.Tech and Ph.D. from NIT Raoulkira and currently working as assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science at Triple IIT Bhuneswar since 2012. He all he is also associated with the startups such as Tech Boot Camp, Palki Academy, and AUUM Technologies and government funded projects. <clears throat> He involved in several research communities, including IEEE, IEEE Computer Society, ACM, CSI, IEE, ISRD, etc. <clears throat> Dr. Sharma given several invited talks, webinars, and guest lectures on research methodology, IoT, cloud and edge computing, blockchain, and many other subjects of computer science at different places, like. NIT Rahul Kela, Surat, NIT Patna, JNTU Hyderabad, and many other places. Uh, thank you, sir. Now I hereby honor the mic to you, sir. Hey, uh, sir, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your kind uh, uh, introduction. Uh, could you allow me to share the uh, screen? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, done, sir. Yeah, is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, in the uh, in the FDP program. In, uh, uh, sponsored by ACT. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, before me, uh, most of you have uh, some introductory information related to the IoT. And you might have uh, known that what do you mean by IoT and how it is working? And uh, what are the, uh, the background related to IoT? And different, of course, different applications related to IoT. Now, uh, I'll discuss related to uh, the IoT only, but uh, we'll see that how the cloud is playing uh, the role uh, related to IoT. Okay. So my uh, talk will be precisely related to the cloud and the aspect of the cloud, that how the cloud will be, uh, will be very important related to the IoT. And what are the different properties of the cloud. So that we'll see uh, first, and then we'll move on to, uh, and we'll relate it to the IoT. So this will be the, uh, the agenda of today's uh, uh, talk. So let's jump into the, the cloud. So we all know that uh, knowingly or unknowingly, we are using the cloud uh, in today's uh, scenario. And, uh, the cloud applications uh, may be anything, may be very different for many persons. So we use many devices, like many computing devices. We may use desktop, we may use laptop, we may use mobile phones, or we may use some, um, some iPad or uh, tab, right? So any of the heterogeneous devices, they require the internet connection to use the cloud. So in the cloud, you can find many services, like you can find the mail services, right? You can find the online calendar, right? You can find, let's say, the OTT platform where you can see the uh, uh, see the videos, right? You, you can open your uh, tweet. You can uh, have the WhatsApp, right? So all these are nothing but different cloud services provided by different cloud service providers. Uh, so all these are nothing but the example of the cloud. Some more examples are like this. Uh, like let's say we want to host our own 
uh, website. So we need the cloud services for that. So we use any of the cloud services like GoDaddy or any other uh, cloud services to host our uh, website, right? So these are the examples of uh, cloud computing, right? Now, suddenly this particular uh, technology has come up and uh, we are using this particular technology like you might be using like Google Drive, right? So Google Drive is nothing but a, a cloud service provided by Gmail and they will give you some 15 GB of a space to store your important documents, right? So we use, to, we use those services. We use many other clouds. If you have the mobile phones, let's say if you have a mobile phone of a company, so that company is providing you some sort of clouds where you can store your important photos you store you can store your important videos right so cloud is is playing a, a, a well known uh, role there so what happened uh, in early uh, 1950s or 60s when the first computer came into the existence right so those computer are uh, built with the vacuum tubes and uh, the computing capability is is very very less right and uh, at that particular time let's say if i if uh, so so those computing facilities are only there with the big companies so there are many uh, company who hold those uh, computing um, facility because we have seen like in early days the computer are very huge right very big and uh, to build cost is very high as well as there are some research institutes uh, which are having those uh, computing facility let's say if i want to use those computing facility for my research work so what i'll do i'll go to those companies or i'll go to those research institute and i'll tell them that these are my work and i need some time with the computing devices so i'll go physically there right and uh, they will give you me the time and i'll use it right um, because i don't have those facility now uh, in 70s or uh, early uh, 80s we have the concept of uh, we have seen the concept of personal computer so when personal computer came into the existence we doesn't have to go anywhere because we have the computing capability in our desk in our desk right so that is called desktop then suddenly it, it uh, become the laptop right so the computing devices what we have right now is is the evolved version of the computer that we have seen earlier and uh, thanks to the ic's uh, integrated uh, circuits right we are getting these particular systems in which we can communicate very easily we can do the work very easily we can do the programming we can do our research we can see the videos we can communicate with the people right so all these are happening when uh, the pcs uh, came into the existence and the evolve of the systems uh, have come up now in 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 around uh, you can see around uh, 2000 or you can see around 2010 uh, we have a, a good uh, amount of computing devices we have where we have a good amount of uh, uh, a system which ha which has the capacity of let's say one terabyte of uh, hard drive we have let's say 8 gb 16 gb of memory we have let's say uh, the eight core uh, processors right but still in in today's world we required uh, some high computing devices some high high com uh, high storage uh, area is this 1 tb is not enough for us in today's world why we are using uh, google drive today why we want to store our uh, phone data our phone data to the cloud right because our phone is also having uh, enough memory why we are using that so because in today's world 
the generation of digital data has been uh, evolved exponentially and day by day we are getting the data for that we we doesn't have the storage capacity which can store locally so we need those uh, devices those uh, services which we are using in 1950 or 60s and the same thing we are using in today's world or in today's scenario so all of you are using some of the cloud services right and uh, the same thing that we are using so what we are doing is we are borrowing or we are using the computing services provided by these cloud service providers right so that we are doing in today's world right and and, and it and it is uh, it is uh, not like it is an op option right now it it is the essential thing we have means it is not a, a, a luxury thing that we are thinking of. It is a very important thing if we are connected with any type of research, if we are in the company, if we are a developer. So we need those services. So let's say if I am the researcher and if I want to do some sort of computing and I'm wor working in machine learning and AI algorithms. So I need some sort of a good amount of uh, computing devices which can give me the result as quick as possible otherwise it will take a month or two months to get my result so i'm using those services right in today's uh, world and the cloud uh, computing service providers are are they are increasing the revenue by that so it is just like you are using that and you are paying for that right so it is just like a paper use uh, basis. So whatever computing capability or whatever computing devices you use for a period of time, that that much of uh, money you have to pay. So just like your electricity, we are using the electricity and there is a meter which will tell that how much unit we have consumed. And based on that, they will provide the bill. The same way the cloud service providers also uh, doing the same, right? And based on their usage, we have to pay. Some of the cloud services are free. Some of the cloud services are, we have to pay for that. So the scenario that we are using in 1950s and 60s, when the first computer came into the existence, the same thing we are using nowadays also. We have the PCs, right? We have the desktop in our, in our um, uh, study room. We have the we have good amount of uh, capacity in my pad in my mobile phone but still i am using the cloud services so cloud services are actually entering in our life slowly without you actually realize that the services came and uh, because of these services that has uh, that has came due to the evolvement of many technologies right uh, Previously, you have seen the concept of cluster computing, the mainframe, right? Distributed computing, right? Uh, then we have uh, decentralized computing. Uh, then we have evolved the web 2.0 uh, uh, technology. So, so many technology has been come up. And the result is in today's world, we have the cloud services. So what is this cloud and why why we are using this cloud in today's world so this cloud is nothing but some sort of computing capability and these computing capability we can use through any type of devices any type of computing devices through the internet connection so we should have the internet connection to use those computing devices that is provided by many cloud service providers okay so let's see uh, if we want to create an infrastructure on premises or we want to use the infrastructure which is already there by the cloud service providers, then what is the difference between these two? Why we are doing that? Uh, why we, why uh, I, I, I want to tell you the, uh, the difference between these two because so that you can understand that what is the necessity of today's cloud computing services that is provided by many cloud service provider companies okay so let's assume that uh, 
I have a form, okay? I have a software form. I have a software form. And this particular software form, I have just, means I am the startup. And let's say my employee right now is, let's say, 30 employee. So I have the strength of, let's say, 30 employee. And uh, with the 30 employee, the software form need to be established. Okay. Now assume like this. Now, as a startup company, because as a startup company, definitely I don't have uh, the, the much revenue, right? So at that particular time, let's say cloud services was not came into the existence. So what I'll do? So for that, I have to uh, buy these computing systems, right? These computing devices, the servers and all, right? So I need the servers. I need the high computing devices for my company, right? Um, that can be used by my current strength of, let's say, 30 employees. So what I'll do is uh, I'll purchase those hardwares. So the initially, we have to pay a higher amount for those computing devices, those servers, right? And these servers are less scalable. Why it is less scalable? Why? Because when I purchase the server, the server has some capability, right? Let's say there are the server and there are different racks in the server and each rack I have some computing. Uh, I have some ser uh, server inside that particular rack. So this is, uh, this is my server and this is in, in one room. That is my server room. And this particular server room will be will be well connected with the internet and those employees who have their own laptop they can use it in my office so in my office there is a there is a LAN connection uh, by which all these uh, laptops are connected to the servers and the server facility i can use with the laptop this is uh, the laptop with today's configuration okay so this particular infrastructure that I have purchased, first of all, I have to pay for it, which is of higher cost, definitely. And it is just less scalable. Why it is less scalable? Because if I want to increase the computing capability, so it cannot be done here. I have to purchase another server for that, and that I can put in my server room, right? So it is not at all scalable. We cannot scale it. Now, if we'll take the cloud service instead of the purchasing the systems or purchasing the servers, if you'll we'll use cloud services, so it is much scalable. And we have to pay what we are using it. We doesn't have to pay for all the infrastructure which we, we may use in future. But here, when we take the cloud service for that, so what will happen is we have to use, we have to pay for only those computing devices or only those computing facility, which I am using it currently. Second thing is it is easily scalable, which one cloud, because the cloud service provider have their servers and these servers uh, could be added up so they can add up at any given time. So it will not take much time to add up those services as well as if I am not using those uh, services for a period of time, so I can scale it down. So previously, let's say I have some configuration. Let's say I have this configuration. Let's say I have 40 TB of uh, hard drive, let's say uh, 60 core of uh, CPU or the processor I required. And let's say I, I need, let's say, uh, 60 feet, 4 GB of uh, memory, right? If this is my configuration of the, the, the server that I have borrowed, right? Uh, sorry, I have purchased the same configuration I can use in the cloud also. But definitely, I do not require 40 GB at a particular period of time. So I may use, let's say, 10 GB, uh, 10 TB, or I may use 20 TB. I'll not use the whole whole uh, computing capability which I have purchased. So why to pay for that if I'm not using it? So is it is it is uh, very much easy to use the cloud services 
and whatever you use you have to pay accordingly so initially if i am the startup company i i don't have to buy those uh, those servers instead i'll i'll use these laptops use the internet connection and connect with the cloud second thing if i have those servers on premises so i need a lot of spaces for the servers i have to put those uh, servers into some place which i call a server room right so i should have a separate room for that and definitely it it will be we have to take a cost right i have to build the infrastructure for that i should have a good connections i should have the uninterrupted power supply ups should, should be there right i i should have the acs that ac should be on all the time so i have all i should have all those infrastructure prior if i am purchasing those uh, servers but here if i am using the cloud i don't have i need don't need any spaces i don't need any acs i don't need any ups for that second thing i need to appoint the hardware and software maintenance team for if i am using the on premises uh, servers right so if in your institute or if in your company you have the server definitely there are some it people there are some server people there are some software uh, maintenance people who are maintaining your software who are maintaining your hardware but here if i am using the cloud i don't have to do all those things it is a headache of the cloud service providers second is here we have the poor data security here we have definitely the better data security features that they can provide less chance uh, of data recovery here so if those server room if there is some disaster occur and these server will be will be down or will be crashed so there is very less chance to recover the data but what happen into the cloud so whatever data you are putting into the cloud that data will be there forever right you might have experienced that also so let's say if you are uh, uh, purchase, uh, purchasing a new phone mobile phone so all the data will be recovered from the cloud right all the data all your uh, uh, all your photos all your videos it is safe there in the cloud even though your mobile phone will be physically damaged or maybe it may be uh, lost but if you are storing the data into the cloud we can recover the data very easily so there is uh, some advantages that we are having when we have the infrastructure on premises or when we have the infrastructure into the cloud next thing is there is a lack of flexibility here we have we doesn't have the flexibility at all because whatever computing device we have purchased we have purchased right we we doesn't have uh, the flexibility to enhance it or to um, uh, decrease the computing capability but in the cloud service uh, when we are using the cloud service it is giving us the high flexibility we can increase we can decrease we can uh, have any sort of uh, changes that we want to do in our, our computing infrastructure we can do very easily when it is in the cloud no automatic update here in on premises related to the software but it is the it is the problem or it is the uh, the headache of the cloud service provider to give us the software which is updated i don't have to purchase the licenses here but here if i am having the infrastructure on premises i have to purchase those licenses those renew i don't i have to re renew the licenses all the time i have to renew the updation all the time right here we have the less collaboration with the team but here because the cloud services we can use it through the internet we have the more collaboration we can do and it it will be widespread uh, from location to location let's say if i want to expand the team in in different locations of uh, of the globe or let's say if i have i have um, the team in india i want to expand my team in usa i can easily do that and they can work on the same project same same thing right if i have the cloud service uh, or the cloud infrastructure 
data cannot be accessed remotely here but here we can access as well as share the data anywhere through the internet connection takes longer implementation time if we have the infrastructure on premises but here with one click we can create an infrastructure with the cloud computing services okay so uh, let me show you one uh, uh, cloud uh, services which is uh, given by the amazon web in amazon services which is called amazon web services aws so most of you have heard about aws right so i just want to show you what what i told you just i want to show you that how, what is that particular cloud and how it is working so actually i have entered into the uh, amazon web services this is the amazon web services management con console and there are many services which is provided by the amazon so this all services if i click the all services so all these are the different services provided by the cloud service providers okay so there are some software related services there are some platform related services as well as there are some infrastructure related services so because i have given the example of infrastructure so i'll show you one infrastructure related services so these are all infrastructure related services or computing related services i'll show you the first one which is called ec2 that is called elastic compute cloud this particular services with that you can create your virtual machine here in the in this particular cloud so with the help of this ec2 services you can create your infrastructure here in the cloud okay so let's say if i want to launch an instance uh, for that or the want to create an infrastructure so i'll go to the launch instance and uh, and here i can find out many options so see here i have many options of first of all it is giving me the options of operating systems so which operating system you want in your uh, in your uh, 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 in your virtual machine so let's say if i am having these uh, ubuntu server so i'll select it now after that it is asking for uh, how much cpu you required how much memory you required right so you can see this is for free this particular infrastructure which is having one core cpu and one gb of memory which is free and other services are you have to pay for that so as you can see you can create the infrastructure so as this particular is for the cpu and this particular is for the memory you can see here when i'll go through 96 cpu 96 core of cpu 192 gb of memory it is providing so it is just like a server right it is the server that they are providing if you go beyond that you can find the infrastructure like this 64 core of of the cpu and 128 gb of memory as you can see so it is providing me see 64 core of cpu and 188 gb of memory here 96 core of cpu 384 core of of uh, memory right so if i choose any of any of these infrastructure i can choose it so any any infrastructure i can select and i can go further uh, so in the next i i may have i may have that how much uh, what what is my instance and how it is running what are the different uh, uh, another machine or how many user you want in that that you can do here we have the storage how much storage you required here you can give in the size so it is of 8 gb by default you can um, make it to 1000 gb right so 1000 gb it will become a specific size you can give 1000 gb right so 1000 gb is is enough for any um, any server right that you can do next you can add um, some tags if you want to create it for different different users that you can do many configuration then you have the security uh, groups here you can uh, you can open some some sort of uh, port let's say here you want to uh, connect this particular server which you are creating into the amazon web services through ssh you can open that or you can add some more 
let's say if you want to use http you can use it that you can add if you want to use some more uh, custom uh, https that also you can use so any type of port you want to open with that particular server you can do that and then you can launch your so it is in one click you can launch your big infrastructure here in the cloud okay so it is very easy but the one thing is whatever you create here you have to pay for that right so some of the services are free some of the services you have to pay as i told you so this is an uh, example that i have uh, sh uh, shown here that on premises if we create the infrastructure or if i want to use the infrastructure which is there in the cloud then what is the difference so cloud computing is the delivery of on demand computing service over the internet on a pay as you go basis right so as you can see with one system you can have many services you can use many services as you want so if the, for the storage let's say we want to use some sort of a storage devices like flash drive like hard drive like cds so if i am storing the data here and if i am storing the data here let's say in a google drive or let's say in in other drop down uh, or what is a dropbox right so any type of cloud services if i want to store then what is the difference that you know right you know better than me so i think in my career i have purchased 30 40 flash drive but right now i don't have any flash drives available with me i have many um, cds that i have written in my btech and mtech days but i don't have that cd available i have purchased the hard drive also to store the data but those hard drives are i don't know where it is and maybe it has been crashed right but the data which i am storing into the cloud which is there permanently so definitely this is the safe choice for me to store the data in today's world because the cloud uh, services are more uh, becoming more and more reliable they are becoming more and more uh, secure now we have the the official definition of cloud and it is given by nist national standard of standard and uh, national institute of standard and technology so this nist has given a definition of cloud computing it says that cloud computing is a model of enabling ubiquitous con uh, convenient on demand network access to a shared pool of configuration computing resources these resources are network servers storage application and services that can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort or service provider intervention. So this particular definition is actually the complete definition of cloud computing. And it says that, that the cloud computing facility we can use with different type of computing devices with very convenient way and in an on-demand way. So based on my demand, based on the user demand, I can create it. They will give me the computing resources like network, servers means your processor, storage, applications, as well as different type of services. And they will give me all those computing services by their existing services. So from the existing services, they will, they will share those services with many users that can be rapidly provisioned, right? That we have seen in the example that with one click, we can create a whole server, right? And it will be released with minimal, with, with minimal management effort or service uh, effort or service provider intervention. So the service provider, which is a Amazon web service providers, he does, uh, they, these people doesn't have to do anything. They have created their portal with web 2.0 technology where the pages are dynamic. It is taking the input from the user. And in backend, they are running the script, which is running in the server, and creating a virtual computing infrastructure for me. So without any much effort, the system is created for me, right? 
So this is how the cloud uh, computing is and uh, the example of cloud computing, right? Now, uh, related to the cloud computing, there are three things. Okay? The first thing is its characteristics. So NIST has also defined five essential characteristics, five essential characteristics of cloud service uh, cloud computing and uh, let's say if I want to create the cloud computing services so I need to have all these five characteristics okay the first characteristic is on-demand self-service next is uh, broad network access the third one is resource pooling the fourth one is rapid elasticity or expansion and the last one is measured services so these are the five essential characteristics which should be there for any cloud service provider. Next is they are giving an essential service model. Those are called software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. And there are some four deployment model, private, community public and hybrid okay so about all these three things characteristics services and deployment models we'll see one by one related to the cloud so that we'll understand the cloud uh, in a in a, a good way and then we'll slowly see that how the cloud will be related to the IoT and how it is helping the IoT infrastructure to work in a better way. So these are the five essential services related to cloud computing. The first one is on-demand self-service. It says that based on the demand of the user, so user will go to the portal of that particular cloud, cloud service provider they can enter or sign in, in in there and based on their requirement or on demand you will get your infrastructure you will get your services available you will get your software that you want to use so it is an on demand self service this should be the first characteristics of cloud computing so if you want to create a cloud computing infrastructure your cloud computing infrastructure should have this characteristic which is on demand as well as self-service so with the demand of the customer the customer can create the infrastructure next is the broad network access this is the second uh, uh, characteristics of cloud service provider now what is the meaning of broad network access see when you are creating a cloud computing infrastructure and you doesn't have a good um, bandwidth related to your uh, internet connection, so definitely it is of no use. So you should have a good broadband connection. You should have a, a good uh, speed, data speed, because see, there is no, not, only one user will use your infrastructure, right? There are millions of users which, which may use your infrastructure. So your internet facility should be very good. Your data communication speed should be very good. So in that way, the broad network access is very much required. The next characteristics is resource pooling. We all know what is the meaning of pooling, right? So we, we we know what we mean by carpooling. So in the carpooling, what will happen is, let's say if I'm going into, uh, if I'm going to my office and some of my colleague want to uh, join my, my vehicle so they can join it and we can share the uh, petrol uh, expenses, right? So in that way, what will happen? The resource, which is a car can be, can be uh, shared with many many people right so here also will happen the same thing resource pooling facility should be there with the cloud service providers i'll tell you one example of this resource pooling so 
uh, the Google Drive, right? The Google Drive, which is providing you the storage capacity, and they will provide you the storage capacity of 15 GB. Do you think that 15 GB the Google is giving you on hard drive? Is that a separate hard drive for the 15 GB given by the Google? No. There is a hard drive, let's say, and this particular hard drive, the size of this hard drive is, let's say, how much uh, is, let's say, 1 TB. This 1 TB is divided into 15, 15 GB virtually. Okay. Uh, or you can say the logically. Logically or virtually, it is divided into 15, 15 GB. And in one TB of hard drive, there are maybe 10, 20, 30, 40 users which are using the this particular facility, right? So this particular hard drive will be using the concept of resource pooling. Means they can be shared. They can be easily logically divided into 15 GB each, as well as these users, let's say user one, who are using the 15 GB will have a space for user one. You should have a separate logical space for user two, separate logical space for user three, which is using this 15 GB of memory. That concept is called resource pooling. So the resources, this is the storage I, I, I am telling you, you can use any type of resources, right? So we may have the processor, we may have the CPU. CPU may have, let's say, eight core, and you might you might have seen like we we can use one core also how we can use one core because this cpu can be logically divided and one core will be used by one user seven core is still free and that can be used by other users so this is how the resources can be pooled the same thing will happen to the ram your memory let's say the size of my memory is let's say 32 gb but i require 2 gb of memory so how can I use it? Do I have the separate 2 GB of memory for me? No, this 32 GB has been given to you. The same thing will happen into your laptop or your desktop when you want to install other operating systems or other infrastructure through the virtualization software, right? So let's say in my system, uh, I'm using Mac OS and I'm using the Ubuntu also. So the Ubuntu, uh, which is uh, used by many research uh, work, uh, I, I just, use those uh, uh, another virtual system in my physical system i have two system right one system where i am running mac another system where i am running ubuntu but the memory i have allotted for that storage i have allotted for that right the same thing will happen to the cloud service provider when it is using uh the any type of infrastructure and that can be done through resource pooling concept next is called rapid elasticity or expansion now what is the meaning of rapid elasticity or expansion the thing is that uh you all are uh, you all are familiar with the e-commerce side let's say hmm? so you have uh, the flip card Right, you you know Amazon, right? So let's say uh, there are in the Flipkart or in Amazon, there is uh, the big billion day or some Independence Day sale, or there are many other type of sale that they are doing throughout the year, right? So what happened on those days? On those days, uh, the server uh, re requirement or the processing or the memory requirement will be increased for those e-commerce site where they are hosted. So what they do is they will put their infrastructure into the cloud and in the cloud, based on the requirement of the user, the resource will be added up or resource could be scale up. Okay, So that we can, uh, we can serve those many customers at a particular time. If the services are not at, at all available, let's say in Amazon, in a big billion day there are three days which is a big billion day and there are sale and uh, let's say in amazon they are not using the cloud instead they are having a dedicated server for it but server is not enough 
for that particular um, traffic of uh, of the customer request so these customer will be like how they will react they will react like I'll not use that particular uh, e-commerce site. Instead, I'll go to another e-commerce site, right? So that is the the problem or the business uh, crashes with this uh, e-commerce site. So what they do is they use the cloud service uh, for hosting their website, and they use uh, the the rapid elasticity on that. So based on the requirement, these cloud will add up the infrastructure to go to Amazon or to Flipkart, right? The same thing will happen to uh, Netflix. So during the pandemic, you might have uh, might have seen like in uh, fifth and sixth, some um, Saturday and Sunday of uh, I think the January or uh, I think I don't uh, remember the month, but three four months back they have a launch like netflix is free for these two days right so many people like in india it is free for these two days so in, in india many people have installed the flipkart uh, sorry netflix and they have uh, enjoy the video there so do you think that without the cloud they they might have done that no without the cloud it is not at all possible so cloud give the elasticity or elastic or rapid expansion of the resources to the infrastructure and they can also decrease it let's say from in five and six there is a huge demand of the of the user so they can serve they can serve all those users so they should have the infrastructure to serve them right and and after that there is some limited user who might have turned up as a as a subscribe user or they might not have turned up right so but with these two days they have added up the the infrastructure to it right so let me show you So if I'll if I'll write Netflix is hosted on, it says that Netflix uses AWS for nearly all its computing and storage need, including database analytics, recommendation engine, video, transcoder, and more. Hundreds of functions that is total uh, use more than these much of server instances on AWS. See? So Netflix is there in AWS. So Netflix is, uh, I think, 90% of you are using it on um, Netflix after the pandemic or during the pandemic. Um, and they are using the cloud. Why they are using the cloud? This is a big company. They should have their own infrastructure. But they are using the cloud because of these characteristics, because of the rapid elasticity, right? Next is measured services. This is an essential characteristic. Let's say we have the we have the uh, electricity by let's say the the state government and uh, they do not provide the meter into the home. Now, how they will measure that? How much unit I have uh, used or how much unit of electricity I have used? Right. So all these houses they put the meter this electricity meter will tell uh, these uh, company that how much electricity we have used in the same way in the same way cloud service provider also should have the measured services so service services that is given that is provided by the cloud service provider should able to measure should able to measure so to measuring those services you should have the infrastructure right and if you have if you can measure it then only you can generate the bill otherwise how you can generate the bill right so if i'll show you here uh, there is a billing right in the aws so in the billing you can find out that how much bill it will be generating so it is a monthly bill that they are giving 
So I'm working in a project with Odisha government, I'm working in a blockchain. And uh, it is uh, for last uh, one year we are working on it. So you can see the last month, uh, the, the last month, the usage that I have done is $218, right? In the next month, the prediction of the next month is $109. So that much of uh, uh, infrastructure, I have used it. Yeah. So I have used many services like Cloud uh, Watch, then AWS Amplify, then A3. This is there is some uh, uh, blockchain services also will be provided by the cloud service provider. So that facility also I have used it. So because I'm using all those uh, facilities, all those. Uh, uh, cloud uh, services provided by the cloud service providers. So that's why they are having these, all these bills. And these bills should be, see this is the blockchain service that is provided by the cloud service provider. And uh, this uh, service I have used in the project. So what I am telling you is, uh, these are the characteristics of any cloud or any cloud infrastructure will have all those services available okay next is what are the different services which are provided by the cloud service providers okay so these are three type of services which are provided by the cloud service provider the first one is the infrastructure they are providing the infrastructure they are providing the the hardware to us. This is the first service provided by the cloud service provider. Next, the cloud service can provide platform as a service. They can provide us the, the, the a platform where I can develop some sort of software, where I can host my website, where I can put my, my uh, data, right? So they, they can provide some sort of platform that is called platform as a service, or they can provide the software uh, usage some application right you can provide some application that is called software as a service so like virtual machine server storage load balancer network all these means hardware if they are providing the hardware that comes under infrastructure as a service along with the hardware if they will provide us uh, or they will manage all those hardwares and all and they will provide us just the platform where i can host my my website where i can put my data i can develop or i can execute those uh, those uh, uh, data i can execute those program that is called platform as a service and then there is a software as a service like you are using email services you are using some sort of uh, games right online games those are the example of software as a service okay so to understand it fully let's say if you have the server on premises so you have to manage your own network storage server means your processor virtualization software you have to manage the operating system you have to manage middleware runtime software data and application you have to manage so all those things we have to manage if the server is in the premises. Let's say if I want to use infrastructure by the cloud service provider. So what they do is they, we, they are going to give us the hardware. So this is the hardware that, that they will give us. So they will give, you, give us the network, storage, server, and virtualization software. They will give us the, the bell metal uh, hardware. What is our our thing my objective is to install the operating system on it install the middleware runtime software the data and the application all these things will be managed by me if i am using the infrastructure as a service so they will give you give me the hardware this is the hardware part they will give us in the platform as a service along with the hardware along with the hardware essential software they can provide us means Operating system, they will manage. Middleware, they will manage. Runtime applications, they will manage. What is our objective? Our objective is to have our own data. So data we have to upload there. And the application in which we want to run those data, that we have to put. So this 
thing we have to manage if I am using platform as a service of the cloud service provider. But if I'm using the software as a service, so the hardware as well as the software will be managed by the cloud service provider. I don't have to do anything. I just have to use their application, what they are providing, like online game, mailing services, CRM services, communication services, so any different type of software services, I can use it. Where I don't have to do anything. Right? So this is the example of infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, as well as software as a service. Now, what are the different way by which I can select the service? Right. So let's say if I have to choose software as a service. So if you are the end customer who uses a software like Microsoft Office, email services, social networking services, so I'll use software as a service is the perfect choice for me, right? Second is if I want to use platform as a service, let's say I am the developer, right? I have the, I have the, uh, let's say the website I want to host there. I am the researcher, right? And uh, I have the data, but I don't, uh, I don't have the infrastructure to run it. So I'll use platform as a service. So if you are uh, into development, who does not want to manage infrastructure, Platform as a service is suitable as you want to focus on developing the application without bothering about the management of the platform. So platform means your hardware as a software platform, right? When should you choose infrastructure as a service? If you have a, have a complicated IT implementation that you are migrating to the cloud. So let's say if you have you want to create your own servers and you want to move to the cloud. So for that, you can use infrastructure as a service. So this infrastructure service may be the right solution for you as it involves the development of infra right from the scratch. We can develop it. There are some companies which are providing us software as a service like salesforce.com. Microsoft Office 365, Box, Google App, Amazon Web Services, Dropbox, right? Uh, your uh, uh, Google Drives, all those are software as a service. Then we have Platform as a service, which is having uh, Amazon Web Service, Elastic, um, Menstay, then Salesforce, Software AG, Microsoft Azure, IBM Bluemix, uh, Red Hat, OpenShift, Oh, VMware, Pivotal CF, Google, Google App Engine. So all those are the example or the company or the services are the example of platform as a service. Then we have infrastructure as a service, which is provided by DigitalOcean, IBM Cloud, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, OpenStack, Rackspace, VMware, Red Hat. All these are the company. It is not limited. Like these are the the top company which are providing the infrastructure as a service. These are the cloud service provider company like Amazon, Microsoft, Google, IBM, Rackspace, GoDaddy, Version Cloud, VMware, Oracle, DigitalOcean, Red Hat, Managed Cloud. All these are different company who provide the cloud service providers. Now let's see the third part, which is the deployment. That what are the different way we can deploy the cloud? So we can deploy the cloud in these four ways. We can deploy the cloud with public, private, the four community, as well as hybrid. So we have these models, these deployment model that we can use for the cloud service uh, infrastructure. Okay. So first one is a private cloud. The cloud infrastructure is provisioned for open use by the general public. It may be owned, managed, and operated by a business academy or government organization or some combination of them. It exists in the premises of the cloud providers. So the first one is the public cloud. So public cloud could be public to all. Next is the private cloud. The cloud infrastructure is provisioned for exclusive use of a single organization comprises multiple consumers 
that is business unit it may be owned managed and operated by the organization a third party or some combination of them and it may exist on premises or off premises next is the community cloud that community cloud infrastructure is provision for exclusive use by the specific community of consumers from organizers that have shared cons uh, that have shared concerns such as different type of mission security requirement policy com uh, compliance uh, consideration it may be owned managed operated by one or more of the organization of the community a third party or some combination of that it may exist on premises or off premises the last one is the hybrid cloud is a hybrid model this particular cloud infrastructure is the combination of two or more distinct cloud infrastructure like public private or community that remain unique uh, entity but are bound together by standardized or priority technology that enable data and application portability that is cloud bursting for cloud balancing between clouds now i'll tell you all these things one by one the first one is the public cloud so what what is said by the public cloud the public cloud is public to all means anybody can use it i shown you the aws aws is a public cloud okay so anybody go there open your uh, just sign in there and you can use it so this cloud providers have the, the these hardware software whatever it is we can use it so outside user can use that particular cloud infrastructure now if i am the company and i am a big company i'll not use the cloud cloud uh, public cloud why i'll not use the public cloud because public is accessed by the public so that is there is some security concern so in the public cloud there is some security concern the reason is i am using the resource pooling as i told you so if i am storing the data in the same physical drive so it is possible to hack by the attack ha hacker who is using that particular drive can go beyond that particular logical uh, separation right so that's why the sensitive data will not put as a form as a big form i'll not put into the public cloud what about the private cloud so big companies they own their own uh, cloud infrastructure that infrastructure is dedicated to a particular company and there is no outside user who can use it only the inside user will use it outside user will be blocked so for the big company which has the uh, sensitive data to store they will use this private cloud deployment facility next one is the community cloud let's say two or more company are working in a same project let's say we have a, a, a project called autonomous car or driverless car and many companies like uh, tesla mercedes bmw right so these big companies they are working in these projects so what they do is they will create a cloud which is called community cloud and this particular community cloud could not be accessed by the outsider but only accessed by the employee dedicated employee with all these organizations okay but it is shared between the organizations and between those dedicated people only okay that infrastructure is called community cloud the last one is the hybrid cloud now the hybrid cloud is a combination of public cloud as well as private cloud so we have the private cloud we have the uh, public cloud as well as community cloud also now what will happen is if i am using the public cloud the cost will be less okay and security will also be less if i am using private cloud so the cost will be high because all the infrastructure is dedicated to one firm and security would also be high so to manage 
the cost and the security concern, we use the concept of hybrid cloud. And many big companies are working in the hybrid cloud infrastructure. Now, what will happen is, as a, as a firm, I'll use the public cloud to store the public data, which is not as sensitive data. So the cost will be less. But I'll use the private cloud to store my private data or some sensitive data. So for that, the cost will be high. Instead of instead using all public infrastructure, I'll use the hybrid infrastructure. Getting it? So that the cost will be managed as well as the security concern will be managed. So the sensitive data I'll put in the private cloud and non-sensitive data I'll put into the public cloud. Okay. So this is the cloud, uh, the hybrid cloud deployment. And it is very much famous right now. Now let's start with the questions where we have started. Like cloud is essential to the success of IoT. We have seen that what do you mean by cloud? You know what do you, what is the IoT, right? Let's see that how we can uh, make an integration or how we can integrate cloud with IoT. We know that the cloud is a huge interconnected network of powerful servers that perform services for business and for the people. Generally, sometime what happens, some sometime that happen in the cloud is any activity that takes place over an internet connection instead of device itself. So, if I am uh, using the IoT infrastructure, so we know that in the IoT infrastructure there are five component the first component is the thing or the devices right so the thing or the devices are connected with the internet so so here we have the we have the sensor node and this sensor node is having the sensing as well as processing capability but it is very small and we are putting it or we are attaching it with a object so let's assume that there are many sensor nodes which are attached with the thing and the thing from the thing the sensor is generating the data this is nothing but wireless sensor network this particular wireless sensor network is used to generate the data now these data which they are generating they can process here also because these are the nodes which have the computing capability but the thing is that they doesn't have much capacity of storage. They doesn't have much capacity of processing. They doesn't have much capacity of storage as well as communication. So what they do is they will send the, these data, whatever they have, uh, they have generated in the wireless sensor network to the gateway node. This particular gateway node is having the IP address and it is connected with the internet. So what this gateway node will do is gateway node will send these data to the cloud infrastructure and cloud we know that there is unlimited storage unlimited processing unlimited uh, storage uh, memory right so we we'll, we use this cloud for two things for storage and for processing all those data so to store the data, we use the cloud. To processing the data, we use the cloud. Okay. Why we cannot do the processing of the data here in this particular uh, physical infrastructure? The reason is this: because these sensor nodes are constrained with processor, constrained with memory, constrained with the storage. So we'll use the cloud. Now let's go to the question again. That whatever we are doing through the internet is we are doing in the cloud instead we'll do in the device excel for much of iot the head or rather brain of the system is the cloud why brain because we know that in a human being as a human being we have many sensors right we have nose we have eye we have tongue we have uh, uh, skin, uh, we have uh, ear. 
So with these, all these sensors, we are sensing the data and these data I am sensing, I'm giving to the brain. In the brain, brain will store all those data as well as process all those data. The same thing which is happen as the cloud. The cloud will also do the same thing. It will store those data. It will process all those data. Brain also will do the same thing. It will store all those data and will process all those data. And the result will give into the actuator. So that is another, um, another topic to discuss. But here we are just just uh, uh, comparing the cloud with the brain. So it is a brain to the system. Sensors and devices collect data and perform action, but the processing, commanding, analytics, it means that smart work will be done by the cloud, right? So it is, now the question is, so the cloud is necessary to the IoT? Is it necessary to the IoT if it is doing all those things? So the answer is no, it is not necessary to the IoT. It is not necessary. This cloud is not at all necessary to the IoT. Why? The data processing and commanding could take place rather locally why, uh, than in the cloud via the internet connection known as the fog or edge. So if we have the fog computing or if we have the edge computing infrastructure on premises, then I don't need the cloud. But we have seen that if I want to put all those things into the infrastructure or in premises, then what are the problem that we are having, right? Because the IoT is generating lot of, lot of data. To store those lots of data which IoT is generating, we require a huge amount of storage uh, capacity or the processing capacity to process it, right? So that's why it is, it is essential. However, there are uh, substantial benefit to be had using the cloud for many IoT application. Choosing not to use the cloud would significantly slow, slow the industry and to decrease the or to increase the cost. So see, cloud is not at all necessary. But the thing is that it will slow the processing as well as it may increase the cost if you are not using the cloud. So that's why we have to use the cloud. Is the cloud desire, desirable for IoT? So yes, it is most desirable for IoT. Why? Because of these benefits. So what is the benefit? It may decrease the cost, both upfront and infrastructure. Pay as you need for storage and computing. High system scalability and availability. Increased lifetime of battery powered sensors devices because if these sensor devices, which is the already the battery powered devices, will do the processing, will do the storage and all. So the battery life will be decreased. Available uh, uh, ability to aggregate large amount of data. Anything with the internet connection can be can become smart. So we can do some sort of AI algorithm, machine learning algorithm in which it can do the processing of all those data and get the result, which may be benefited for the IoT infrastructure, right? So to take all these benefits related to the cloud, we say that, yes, the cloud is desirable for IoT. Is it essential? It is necessary for the IoT? No. Without the cloud, we can create the IoT infrastructure. But if we are creating the IoT infrastructure without the cloud, and uh, so the, the cost upfront uh, as well as infrastructure cost is more. So is it better to use cloud? Yes, it is better to use cloud. So that's why in the major component of cloud, uh, sorry, major component of IoT, cloud is there. Cloud is there, which may use some analytical algorithm, some machine learning or AI algorithm to make the decision in a very smarter way and that decision will be given to the to the user through the user interfaces either maybe the website or maybe the the, the application web application or maybe with your mobile phone or mobile application it can given to the user who are using this iot infrastructure okay so 
I think uh, that's all related to the the cloud and how the cloud is important to IoT. We have seen like uh, uh, different functionality of the cloud and uh, uh, different ways, different services, characteristics, deployment model related to the cloud. So we'll conclude it. The internet generate a huge amount of data or big data managing the flow and storage of data it is tedious task for an enterprise so the cloud computing with its different model and implementation platform help companies to manage and analyze these data enhancing the overall efficiency and working of iot system cloud computing allow company to store and manage data over cloud platform providing scalability to the delivery of application and software as a service Cloud computing also allow data transfer and storage through the internet or with the direct link that enable uninterrupted data transfer between devices, application and cloud. This is the conclusion related to how the cloud is important to IoT. So that's all related to the cloud and uh, iot if you have any queries you can ask and i'm ready to take your queries uh, sir am i audible yes ma'am hello yeah uh, sir i have a question uh, you talked about the data aggregation and you said that uh, cloud is desirable but not that essential for iot so in terms of data aggregation, uh, where can we switch this and the data processing as well? Uh, instead of cloud, can we do it in either fog or uh, edge? And what is what would be the difference between these two layers? See, uh, fog, what is a fog computing? So fog computing is nothing but the local cloud. So there is all the cloud facility available, but we are using it locally. So it is just like you know, the, the, the server, which is in premises. So instead of sending the data into the cloud, we are processing as well as the storing in, in, in the infrastructure itself. What is the edge devices? So edge devices are nothing but the devices which are working in between the, the, uh, the local infrastructure as well as the cloud. So in between that, we have the gateway node, right? So the gateway node is the interface between the, the wireless sensor network or the actual sensors, which are attached with these objects and generating the data and sending to the cloud. So instead of sending to the cloud, these edge devices, these gateway node can process some of the essential data. I'll take an example, man. Let's say if I have uh, infrastructure into the hospital, right? And what I'm doing is uh, all these sensors which, which are giving the patient data, let's say it's blood pressure, it's temperature, it's uh, glucose or the um, uh, homoglobin level or, or anything else. So what they will do is they will send these data to these uh, gateway node. Now this gateway node is, let's say, your edge edge computing devices. So what they do is if there is some emergency to the patient, so they can generate, they can compute the blood pressure over there and they can give the data at that particular time and give the notification to the doctors or to the attender. So that can be done in using these edge devices for some essential applications like this, which I told you other data which is maybe the diagnosed data which may be uh, may be uh, done by the cloud that can be done later on so the essential thing or essential data that need to be processed and should be processed as fast as possible so for that we use edge computing otherwise we'll use cloud computing uh, so, so can we say that edge and uh, fog, they are uh, like alternate terms which can be used? Um, uh, could you repeat the question, ma'am? I'm saying uh, like um, edge or fog. So they can be uh, same terms or what? Like 
no 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 both are quite different okay i, I told you what is the fog and what is the edge both are different right right so if i am having a like uh, rpi or any uh, arduino uh, processor so they can act both as a edge device as well as a fog device as well no arduino well. see arduino or these non mcu which has a limited capacity of oh, storage yeah. and processing so instead of that you can use raspberry pi yes which can act as a edge device yeah okay okay sir thank you uh okay uh thank you sir i extended heartily thanks to our speaker who spared time from his busiest schedule to grace this session today we had opportunity to hear your thoughts and this will surely be going to encourage us in a future uh thank you sir and i request it to all participant please switch on your camera so that we can take a screenshot dear participants please uh, put your cam on so that we can have a group selfie or as a record i think uh, <laughs> okay take like this only okay okay thank you okay thank you very much thank you sir